Hello there, this is Dave Motohead. Out in the garage again. Getting some work done. Anyway, I was just going to show you guys what we're doing today. And, uh, anyway, let me put on the hat cam and, and we'll get to it. <laughs> Always got to switch hats. Because you don't want to see me without the hat. Because I got bedroom head hair. Alright, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, on Striper, it's developed, uh, after Phil drove it for a while, developed a leak coming out of the bell housing. It's got like about a, I don't know, every time he parks it, like a teaspoon size leak. And I don't know if it's dip oil or engine oil, but I'm going to check the, the level on the dip. And if it hasn't gone down since the last time I uh, filled it up, then I know it's engine oil and we got like a bell housing leak or something like that. Anyway, first thing I wanted to show you guys is this. This is the little trick. You see this bolt right there? And everybody wants to get their, their wrench and, oh, let's take this off with this shroud in place. And you get in there and you're like, oh, I can't do it because, because this thing's in the way. Well, I don't want to take that off. Well, what the trick is with that bolt is that you can take yourself a, take yourself a hacksaw. Or, in my case, the, the little zippy doodad here. And you put a slice in the end of it. Let me put the safety goggles on here. And you can put a slice in that bolt. And then when you loosen it up, you can take a screwdriver and you can take it out. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing and put me a little slice in there. Looks good. Now... When I loosen that thing up, like that, instead of sitting here monkeying around with that thing, I can get my screwdriver, and we can just stick it in the end there, look at that, we can just take it right out now, piece of cake, right, woohoo, and there you go, you got your bolt out, and then if you want to stick it back in, you could just go in there, you know, when you do it again, and Anyway, that's how you uh, put that little slice in the bolt to take it out easy. So that's that. Anyway, I'm going to unbolt all this stuff here and uh, get the starter out of the way. Take these bolts off. We're going to pull this transaxle off. So just one second and we'll get to it. Okay. I've got all my bolts out. Starter off. Clutch rod uh, cover disconnect. You can see it's got oil in there. And what? Uh, okay, dear. Thank you. I'll be in there in a minute. That's my wife, Joe. Anyways, uh, what I wanted to do is I cleaned all this off. And I'm going to pop the plug here. And I'm going to see what comes out of it. Because if it's low, then maybe my diff lube is what's leaking. And it should be right at the top. And that's the plug to check the diff oh man it's full so I'm thinking that that's not the problem so more than likely we have a that's way full almost too full but more than likely we have a problem with the bell housing now I never changed the bell housing seal Get that tight I never changed the bell housing seal, so I'm going to pull this off, and and uh, I'll film that next after I'm done eating my breakfast. Okay, what I've done now is I've got my engine jack, transmission jack, whatever, with the Corvair cradle positioned underneath our transaxle, and I've taken all the bolts out except for this one up on top. Take these out. But one thing I kind of wanted to show you guys, which was kind of weird was this valve cover here. I made this, this is my cutout valve cover, you see. And the reason I cut this one out, and as you can see, I tried to protect my investment with clothespins to keep the dirt out. But one of the reasons I used this one was because I was trying to put it on one day, and I noticed that the distance between this lip and that lip is too shallow compared to the rest of them, and if you see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but 
the spring keepers or the valve cover keepers will not uh, they will not fit on these valve covers they won't line up you can't stick the bolt in which is very weird because of this distance if you take and look at this other one put them side by side you see the difference now I don't know why you see how flat and big that one is and how small and little that one is so I don't know why that's that way I've never seen one like that before so since I couldn't put if you look it's got indentations for the little teeny keepers but anyway that's why I chopped that one up and made it made it my cutoff valve valve thing because the little keepers wouldn't fit okay well we're ready to pull this transaxle off now let me motor around in my little wheelie seat Ooh, straighten out okay now I love my little wheelie seat it works great for cruising around these engines when they're on my stand and but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this bolt off and that's our last bolt now I'm gonna look at my gap and it seems that we need to maybe go up just a tad bit I try to keep these things perfectly level so now we should be able to grab this thing and just pull it right off there there we go okay now we got that separated and uh, take our handy duty flashlight here and take a look see and see what the heck is going on now you can see that one is welded this is a welded case right there and it's kind of looking to me like it might be gear lube then again it might not be well I guess we'll take the let me smell this stuff hmm doesn't smell greasy so maybe it is coming out of there it kind of looks like it might be coming out of there too hmm all right well I will investigate and get back with you and see what uh, see what I find out okay what I've decided to do is I'm gonna pull the pressure plate off pull the clutch out take a look in there and see what I can find I got it apart it's out of the car don't want to do this twice so I'll probably end up uh, replacing all the seals on both sides even though uh, I kind of did it last time except for the belt housing seal but anyway what I've done here is I've rolled this around put me a wrench on there to hold the uh, hold the crank still and what you want to do with these things, you want to go through and you just want to crack them open. Get on there. There's that one. You want to break them loose with a sharp motion. Go around and hit them all. Get them all loose. And then you want to kind of go through there and I'm going to put my pilot tool in there to hold the clutch and I'm going to loosen them a little bit at a time like this kind of back and forth little by little because supposedly if you don't do it that way you can warp the pressure plate or something you don't want to tighten it down all on one side and put all the pressure because the little little springs and stuff will go in there you kind of want to do this evenly kind of like a head so then that way you have nice firm clutch pressure like that anyway I'm gonna continue to do this and and then take this off and we'll be right back 
Okay, we've got uh, most of our bolts out now. Just a hat cam. I love these little magnetic trays. They're all loose, so we're just gonna take the rest of them out real quick. I always leave the top one in there. I prefer these kind of wrenches over the, than the ones because I can always just go like that and it's quicker or my other little wrench anyway if you notice there I got a mark and that's where uh, when I balanced the clutch I lined it all up okay we're getting loose here and what I'll do is I'll just hang on to that take this last one out grab a hold of this sucker there we go. One pressure plate. Looks like I had a little bit of a little bit of oil getting on it. So we'll just set that over here for the time being. Pull our clutch out. And you can see it says flywheel side on the flywheel side. So the clutch looks good still. Looks brand new. <laughs> And we can see here that none of my crank bolts are leaking. There's no oil there. So, but there's oil on the clutch. And it doesn't look like there's any oil flinging out here. So I'm kind of thinking maybe it's the bell housing seal that's leaking. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this, this cover off and, and see what's behind there. Because if it was this leaking, I think there'd be oil inside here because that mounts up right to there. So, I'm kind of thinking we need to change the bell housing seal. Anyway, I'm going to pull this this flywheel off and then we'll take a look in there. Okay. Now I've got the uh, figured out. I'm going to pull this apart. What I've got is I've got me a, just a slide hammer that I use for body work, and I braised a little brass around it and put a little edge on it and uh, I could stick it in here and slip it behind those the little keeper ring and pull out on it most times come on baby I'm just trying to pull the ring out here we go there we go and there's our little keeper ring that's going to get replaced. And I'm going to stick this behind the seal. Get that seal out of there. Come on, baby. There we go. Yeah, I know it's archaic, but it works. So I don't know why this seal's leaking. But it's no good now, so it's going in the trash. Still looks okay. But if you look in there, we got all kinds of diff lube in there. You can tell it was leaking. Yeah, it feels kind of loose on there. Well, probably because I was beating it up. Anyways, what I'll do now is I'll clean all of this up and clean all of this up and put a new seal in there a new keeper ring and uh, then we'll put it all back together and I'm hoping it should be good so we'll clean it up then I'll get right back to you okay what I've done is I've uh, taken this all apart cleaned it all up and uh, checked it all out and pretty sure that the uh, this is what was leaking and you can see there's a little line in there maybe you can't see it but what we're going to do is we're going to put the new seal in and the new thing but then you say but dave how do you know if it's set in there right well you can you can check it with math math is always fun you can take your little your little uh calipers and you can zero them out and then you check it and you can just push it in there like that and then you get uh, you say what do you get there you get 
1.07 to the, to the ridge. And so I've already written that down, 1.07. And then you can take your seal and you can, you can measure your seal, which is say around 2.40 or 0 0.240, which I did. And you can take your, you can check it, make sure you're, you're centered again and or zeroed out and you can check the check the ring and it's about one point or point one two eight or so and so I've written all that down and then what you do is you just uh, you take your total and you could subtract the two point four zero from one point or I mean whatever anyway you just subtract them and when you get down to the end of it you will realize that once once the seal and the ring and everything's in place that that uh, you should have 0.368 from from the seal to the edge and what you can do here is you can go you can go 0.368 let's see if we can get that anyway it's just math you can measure it and make it fit right pretty close there come on baby anyway there you go and you can say okay and then you can zero it and then you can slide this sucker in there till it hits the lip and you go okay I've got six point or point six four zero or point six three nine which that's about what I got point six three nine and so then you can run this thing back to zero again and you should come back out with 3.68 3.68 that's the number I got after adding everything other except it's minus 3.68 so that's telling me that once we uh, put our our seal in there and everything that's what our measurement should be from the edge of the the edge of the uh, cone here to the seal. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. Okay, what I've done is I've uh, let me position the hat cam. So I cleaned up our input shaft good, and I greased up the seal, and I slid the seal up in here to make sure it's the right one to make sure we got a good tight fit, and it, it seems to fit snug. So grease it up so it doesn't tear and then you can just take it back off of there real carefully as to not to hurt it and so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this now that we know that it's good and it's got some grease on it we're going to put it in the uh, in the snout of the transmission but what I do is you take take a socket let me turn that radio down a little bit lover boy of course anyways uh, you want to use one that's flat like that and it barely fits in there it's about the same size it's a little bit smaller than that seal and that's what I'm going to drive that seal in with and uh, I like that the flat sides that way it doesn't bend this up it, it covers it good so we're going to go ahead and uh, drive that seal in there and what I'm going to do first it's all cleaned up is you want to put a little bit of sealant around the outside of this because it's metal on metal and if you don't seal it up it will leak and I like to stick it in the snout itself and on this and you just go in there and that's what I do just a little bit get in there I don't care if there's too much in there it'll push it back in there and the it'll help lube it up and it's not going to hurt anything at that point point. and you can put a little bit around the seal too yeah it gets gooey but you got to seal that thing up or else the sealant will or the gear lube will come out and you want to stick it in there spring side first Springy side goes in first. And you slide that thing back in there. Let me grab the stuff. And then we take our little 
take our little uh, driver and you try to drive that thing in there flat and straight. You don't want to hit it too hard. You kind of, I put my fingers on here and I can kind of feel when it's, uh, when it's seated. Okay, I want to look at that now. And there's also a, where's my flashlight? I feel like a puppet. Anyway, you can look in there, you can see the little line. There's a line there. And, and you can kind of use that line to gauge where the seal's at. It looks like it's even. And then what else we could do is we could take our where did it go? We can take our caliper and we can turn it on and we can look at our little thing and we say okay it should be after we deduct the seal it should be 0.76 and we can see but once we put the split ring on there it's going to uh, Okay, so we're at 0.766, so we know that we're just about good there, and actually 0.767, so we're, we're right good. So now we're going to take our split ring, and always use a new split ring, because if you look, let's find the old one, old, old split ring here, you can see that, oh gosh, phone's ringing, it's always somebody, isn't it? I will answer that later. If you look, the old split ring is collapsed and the new one is not. So we want to put our split ring in there. And these can get kind of tricky sometimes. You kind of got to start it at one edge and kind of hold it in there and just barely get it tapped in there and started they could be tricky and you don't want to hit it too hard because you can smack the you can break the thingy there push it in there come on baby there we go our split ring started we can take our Take our doodad here and we can just smack that in there. And I can hear it kind of bottoming out. And then we'll measure that and we'll see where we're at. Yeah, I know I'm anal, but. at 0.568 and so we look up here where we we're supposed to be and we're supposed to be at 0.368 I believe unless I made myself a error Huh. Oh well, fuck it. Okay. Well, after realizing that I hit the millimeter button on my calipers and getting pissed off because my numbers, my math wasn't adding up right, I have now pushed the correct number or inches and I'm coming up with what I was supposed to come up with which is 0.639 which is what I have right there so I'm thinking I'm good now I wish I had one of these things that didn't have millimeters on there because I got extremely pissed off because I thought what did I do I didn't add up my stuff right I'm an idiot I'm trying to make a video and I'm being stupid but after realizing my dumb mistake 
and getting mad because my math was way off, I've decided that I'm good. So what I will do next is I will take my little rod here and since I'm all greased up and ready to go inside there and uh, split rings in place sealed the outside that's greased up I'm gonna go ahead and stick my very carefully stick my input shaft in there and try to I try to balance it so it doesn't rub on the so it doesn't rub on the uh, seal too much and then you get it in the spline and there you go okay so we're good on that part now the next thing we'll do and that seems to be nice and tight in there the next thing I'm going to do is put this back together and what I've done is I've cleaned this all up and uh, as good as I can good enough for striper good enough for fill and I'm going to put the uh, flywheel back on and I actually marked where it was because Phil said it drove really smooth so I'm going to go ahead and put the flywheel on there and then put the bolts in there and clean these bolts up and put some sealer on them and I'll do that next okay got our flywheel back in place and uh, actually I don't know if you can see that but I marked exactly where it was I want to get back in the same holes and so now what we will do is we will get our flywheel bolts and we will seal them with gooey yucky permatex which is gooey and yucky but it seems to be the good stuff so what you want to do with this stuff is put a little bit on the on the threads doesn't take much that's about all you need and uh... let me leave this up against here so it won't drip out and you want to seal that because oil will come through these things and you can get your ever important ring that you should never forget and uh, put it in place and make sure that your holes are lined up and you can put your flywheel to crank bolts in place and I will continue doing that but always make sure you use a non-hardening it says right here non-hardening pliable sealant it says on the back it's for thread whole application and other applications so you don't want a hardening one because if you ever take them back out you'll never get them back out if it's hardened so you use the, the good stuff I know the other guys use like an aviation kind but this is what I got in the garage so this is what I'm going to use and it should work fine okay so I'm going to go ahead and do that and get right back with you well I get the flywheel bolted on got my special ring and the bolts torqued them to 45 foot pounds and I was getting ready to put this clutch disc in but started looking at it and it's kind of soaked with oil soaked and what I noticed was that it's loose I don't know if you can see that or not but the whole ring there moves maybe you can see it see that so this clutch is toast the rivets look loose so this one's going in the scrap pile this side is nice and tight but I think the oil got on there and loosened up the material and so that one goes in the junk pile and we will dig through the ever expanding pile of motorhead stuff Hope you guys didn't see too much there but I picked out some old clutch discs that I had and I don't want that one and that one looks pretty good so I'm gonna stick one of these in there a couple of these look pretty decent so I'll pick one of these best ones and I'll clean those up and find out which one's the best one that we're gonna use so as soon as I clean it up I'll get right back to you okay after much thought and cleanage this seems to be our good used clutch disc so we're going to put our little pilot tool in there which is basically a cut off input shaft and I'm gonna see where it says hmm flywheel side so I guess the flywheel side supposed to face me no I guess it goes against the flywheel 
Anyway, so you put your pilot pilot tool in there and it lines up your clutch. And there's our good clutch disc. And then I've got I've cleaned up the pressure plate. And you see I've got a mark on there. Right there and right there. So I know that's where it goes together. Because I balance this thing. You see these little drilled out holes there. That's when I balance it on the tire balancer at the tire shop. And it seemed to work good. It was nice and smooth. So we're going to stick our pressure plate up in there. And then we're going to grab the this doodad and we're going to start these bolts in there. Oh, that one's kind of fantastic. I need to get me a a shallow half pitch. There we go. That way I can stick them in there. And we're going to line that sucker up like that. And we're going to get one started in there by hand. And then we're going to go around and put all these bolts in there. Get them started by hand. And then you kind of tighten these up in a sequence. So we'll get them all in there by hand first and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the flywheel or the pressure plate bolted on the flywheel and uh, I've torqued them all 20, 20 foot pounds. You kind of want to go when you torque, you want to go like that and you want to go like this. You run them all up there hand tight first and you just go back and forth and hit all the ones that you haven't hit and you kind of, you don't want to go around circles, you kind of want to go like that. Anyways, they're all torqued. Got uh, 20 foot pounds with my Craig Nickel grade 5 bolt and then pull this guy out and now we can mate our transmission back to our bell housing and uh, gotta hook that thing up. What you do with these these guys is they uh, these little springy things, you gotta stick them inside there. It's supposed to look like that. Come on. Push it like that. That's how it should look. The little spring thing should be inside like that. So we can put that on. We're gonna have to pull it back off to get it on the little nubs. And then the ball sits down inside those little guys. So what we're gonna do, put that thing on there like that. And we're gonna line it up. You gotta kind of get tricky with it and push the spring thing in on both fingers and, and we missed one because I got gloves on. There we go. Okay, we've got both our spring fingers down inside the the throwout bearing. Got our little guy on there like that. I'm gonna wire this up here so it doesn't flop around on me. piece of wire keep it in place and then I'm gonna make these suckers back together now got a rag on the thingy okay so hopefully more than likely my jacks slip down a little bit I always put this bolt up here in the start so hopefully we're still the same height Close. Kind of got to wiggle them around a little bit. It'll eventually slip in there. Maybe turn the crank just a little bit. See if that helps. Got to get those splines lined up on that thing. There we go. Turn the crank a little bit and then we get this bolt started and you can kind of look in here. Get that bolt started by hand a little bit. Get our little zippity doodad. Now we'll keep that snugged up and we'll go around and put our other bolts in. 
bolt that thing back together and uh, put it all back in there now it's all all together like that and we can move on and assemble the rest of this engine put all the shrouds on now uh, I'm gonna put everything back together and start it up and hopefully we don't have any more leaks in here that would be a uh, a good thing if the leaks were all gone so anyways that's it for today it's been a, an adventure an adventure in Dave Motorhead's garage and that's Dave Motorhead and that is uh, input shaft seal replacement 101 with clutch inspection and all that good stuff so hopefully striper will be on the road and hopefully it won't have a leak can't guarantee it but I kind of think it won't but if it does I'll pull it apart again at another date so there you go. Thanks for watching.